Not only can we ask ChatGPT to write us code, but we can ask it questions on that code right after. Unlike Stack Overflow, we don't need to fear the ridicule of asking a bad question and getting put into no question asking jail for three days. ChatGPT will gladly answer our question and give us an answer immediately. ChatGPT may write you some code, but you're gonna need to be the one to validate it. Much like a job site foreman, you won't do most of the work, but you'll need to verify what was done right and what was done wrong. Also be aware that these models haven't been trained on any newer data than 2021. So if you ask it about the war between Russia and Ukraine, it's not gonna talk about current things, it's gonna talk about things back in 2014. And it may try to import a package that's no longer available. And one of the things I find most frustrating about ChatGPT is that I can't always ask it about ChatGPT. For instance, when I ask it about GPT 3.5 Turbo, it tells me there is no publicly known model with this name. So to find my answer, I guess I'll have to go use a search engine like it's 2021. Context, ChatGPT has it. So I can simply ask, hey, that function that you gave me called ChatGPT, go ahead and give me some useful code for that, and it immediately knows what I'm talking about. We can give ChatGPT further context by giving ourselves and ChatGPT roles. For instance, we could tell ChatGPT, answer this like you're a master web developer. Let's say you're still trying to learn something. You could say, ChatGPT, you be the teacher, I'll be the student, and it'll get you back much better explanations. And for that one thing you just can't seem to figure out, you can say, hey, just explain it to me like I'm five. If you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps me out. If we really want to dive deep into this, we can go over to OpenAI's Playground, which is going to have a lot of different options for us to play around with. For instance, we're going to have four different modes. We have the complete mode, which is where we can give it a pattern, and it'll go ahead and finish that pattern. Or we can just give it a prompt, and it'll respond to that prompt. Chat is where we can just have a more general conversation with ChatGPT. Insert is where we give it something and we want it to fill in a particular part. And edit is where we give it something we just want it to change it to wherever we want it to do. We also have different models, which we'll go over here in just a little bit later. If we want to increase the randomness of our responses, we can increase temperature and top P. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, ChatGPT is a lot like when you type something into your cell phone or into a search engine. It's trying to predict the next word from the previous word. So if we increase top P, well, there's a pool of words that it can pick from. It, by increasing top P, it's going to go ahead and increase that pool of words that it can use, which is going to give us more options. Temperature, on the other hand, looks at the probability of each word that it's going to use. If we lower temperature, it's just going to use the most probable word. But if we increase temperature, well, it's going to go ahead and make those probabilities more similar to where some of these less probable words will get used more often, thus increasing the creativity of it or you know, how random it's going to be. We also have max length, which means that for this particular model here, we can only have 2048 tokens long for a prompt. And for the prompt and the completion that we're getting back, well, both of those combined can't be more than 4,000 tokens. And if we go down here, we also have frequency penalty, which is based on their existing frequency in the text so far. So decreasing the model's likelihood to repeat the same line verbatim. And the presence penalty, well, this one's gonna penalize for CN, it's gonna penalize new tokens better on whether they appear in the text so far. So increase the model's likelihood to talk about new topics. So if it's getting too much off topic or we want it to change topic more often, we can go ahead and change that as well. So we're already at the chat mode. So I went ahead and put in some text here and we can just go ahead and hit submit. And then we can have a general conversation with ChatGPT. So this will be a good one if you're just trying to explore some new programming ideas or whatever you're looking at. And if we go to the complete mode, for instance, we can give it a pattern here. It's our Fibonacci sequence, and it will go ahead and try to complete that. Now, if I hit submit while it's doing that, notice that I've given it several different numbers or different 
examples. If I just gave it like three or two, well, it would have trouble figuring out what exactly I wanted to do. Ten seconds later. Ah, there we go. So it finished that pattern out for us. Now we can do this with code as well. Now I've let purposely left off the second half of this. So if I hit submit, it's gonna go ahead and try and predict what else should be here. So that's for complete. All right, I can also ask it to write us some code here. Now I'm using text DaVinci, which is gonna be the best one for understanding text, but I also have these code codecs as well, which if, for instance, if I'm using just the text DaVinci, it's probably gonna understand what I'm doing for something very simple. It's gonna understand what I'm asking very easily. Now, if I'm using one of the codecs, like I'm using the code DaVinci uh, 2, like it says here, you know, very, or the most capable of the codexes, it wants you to put everything in a comment, so it'll go ahead and try and complete that. Now, for Golang, it, you know, it, it is best to say which programming language and even what version you're using. Now, it doesn't seem to like these comments quite as much. It's gonna think it needs to repeat a pattern here, um, which is not what I'm looking for. Go ahead and cancel that. But for some reason, if I use these style comments, the multi-line comments for Golang, it seems to do much better. So if I go over here, the next one, this one's pretty interesting. This is the codex for, you know, the codex JavaScript sandbox, which is pretty cool where you can see some of this stuff happening in real time. So you just give it some instructions and then it's gonna go ahead and write some code here on the side, or it's gonna go ahead and show you what's happening here as well. And we can say, hey, make it 20%. Let's make it you know, black and white. And it'll show you some of these things in real time. And it doesn't have to be just the instructions that we're giving it. We can just go ahead and give it you know, our own instructions as well. So if I go up here, you can go ahead and see all this code right here. Unfortunately, they don't have this for Golang, but it is something interesting if you want to see what your JavaScript is doing in real time and want ChatGPT helping you with that. We also have insert, which we can go ahead and give it some, some text, which in this case used to be, it's, it is code. And inside the brackets, we want to put the word insert, capitalize, where we want it to insert something. It's going to go ahead and give, a, give it its best shot. Now, if we want to increase the probability, we would go ahead and put some comments inside of the function saying, hey, this is what we want it to do. But this one's pretty simple. It gives us what we want and a little bit more. And on this one here, this is the edit. So again, we're giving it some code. Uh, we have func main, which is just gonna call my func, which is going to print hello world. And so we have our input and we have our instructions, which change the name of the function, my func to hello world and add documentation. So we're asking it two different things here. Let's see if it gets it. Okay, so this used to be my func. Now it is hello world like we asked it to do. And it even changed it up here where it is calling the function. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of documentation. Hello world prints hello world. So we finally created the code that we want, but we wanna create a prompt that we can reuse to create similar code in the future. To get the most accurate result in the future, we're gonna use something called reverse prompt engineering. Uh, why don't you just use the last prompt? Our last prompt is affected by context from any previous questions in the current chat. We want a prompt that we can drop into a brand new chat and work as intended. Once we've created the code that we want, we're gonna use ChatGBT to reverse engineer this prompt. Reverse prompt engineering deserves a video just for itself, but here's something to get you started. We're gonna tell ChatGPT to imagine you are a reverse prompt engineer. I want you to write a prompt that will recreate the code as close as possible. And I'm using this code is equal to, so we can copy our code and paste it in, or we could just paste in some code from somewhere else as well. So we got our prompt back from ChatGPT, and as you can see, it is much more detailed than my original prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it into a new chat. By placing it in a new chat, we can test that we're getting back the code we want, even though there's no previous context in this chat. As you can see, we got back the exact same code, 
and we have a prompt that's much easier to modify in the future. Unfortunately, prompts for larger, more complex chunks of code, say like a Golang chat app, will not always get back the same response. For instance, while using my reverse engineer prompt three times, I got back a different broadcast function every single time. Now, one of the times it did crash, but as we can see from the beginning of it, it is not the same. This had happened even though I had primed the model by giving it an example of what I wanted from ChatGPT, and even after trying to control some of the prompt parameters. All in all, we'll need to remember that large language models are probabilistic and will have some variability. If ChatGPT is writing a lot of code and it stops before finishing, just simply type in continue and hit enter. What's your favorite tip for writing code with ChatGPT? Let us know in the comments down below and please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out and it is greatly appreciated.